This is Empowering Women Everywhere. I am your host, Nan Gill, and today our guest is Amy Anderson Winchell. She is the president and CEO of Access, formerly known as Occupations, Inc., that has over 1,300 employees and staff, and they service over 8,000 individuals in the community a year. Hi, Amy. Hi, Nan. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. And we at Empowering Women Everywhere are very excited to find out all about the programs that you offer at Access. So um, do you want to start out by telling us a little bit about the organization? I'd love to. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Access Supports for Living is a not-for-profit, of course, as you know, and we operate in nine counties in the Hudson Valley. Oh. And um, you mentioned we serve lots of people, but what really matters is each person and family at a time. So our entire goal is to support meaningful lives for everyone, despite the level of challenges and complexities. We know that um, each person has strengths and gifts and ways to contribute to the community. And when, when we're successful in embracing each person, then we all live in healthier communities. Wow, that sounds wonderful. What counties do you serve in? So our corporate offices and, and a great deal of our work is in Orange County. Right. But we also are a significant provider of service in Dutchess County. And in um, Ulster County, we operate the mobile mental health team there. In Sullivan County, we have a variety of services for um, families and children and people with developmental disabilities, as well as individuals who need help in their homes with um, personal assistance. And we also have um, services in Greene County and Columbia okay. County and Putnam and Westchester. We wow. have some employment opportunities. You have a wide variety of programs and a wide area that you cover. And, um, if someone would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? So the best way, Nan, is to call our 800 number, which is 888-750-2266. And because we provide so many services, what I recommend is that the person in need of service just call and talk it through right. with our customer service staff. If someone wants to learn more about your organization before calling, what is your website address? So our website address is www.accesssupports.org, okay. and we do try to, to have a full array of information about the different work that we do, hopefully in a format that people can really understand. Okay. And but if, if there's any question, they can just call you. Yes. In fact, we also have a live chat on our website if people want to ask some questions about services. Good. Good. What are your main services that you offer? Can you go a little bit into that? Sure. That's a, that's a great question. We do a great deal of work in supporting people with psychiatric disabilities and recovery from mental illness right. and other behavioral health disorders. And so that work includes our licensed programs like our counseling centers, right. also a more intensive treatment program, and then lots of supports to um, increase recovery. So housing, care management, um, people to journey with individuals on, on their pathway to what's going to work best for them. Right. Now, do you only help people with housing assistance if they have a mental situation or a mental disability or something, or do you... Well, we have so many different ways that we're supported to work that right. we can usually find a match for each each person or absolutely refer them to another agency. Right. For example, we do one particular project with the Orange County Department of Social Services that supports people who are homeless. We also have quite a few supports for families raising children. Right. And um, a lot of our work, and some of the work we're best known for, is supporting people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. In fact, it's part of what caused us to change our name right. and change the way you can access our services because the list is a bit too long of all of the different ways we support people. Right. And what, what matters is that people get matched with what's going to work for them. Now, is there any charge for your service? So that's also a great question. Most of our services are supported one way or another from government. Uh -huh. And sometimes people will have a copay with their insurance company if they're using, for example, a counseling center. Right. And um, if a person has no insurance, then we would work out a, a sliding fee. I saw something on your website that was about uh, an affordable health insurance that you work with another 
organization to provide. Well, so we'll help people connect to the programs that are available in New York State because some people who don't have insurance are eligible right. and just don't know how to make that connection. Is there a time limit on that? or? And so those rules are um, you know, all governed by the state of New York and, and influenced by federal policy. But in terms of what's available today, right. um, if people are eligible, then, then they can enroll and continue to receive that coverage. Right. So they could just call you and to see whether or not they're eligible for health insurance. They could, although we probably, if that's all they need, would link them to the Department of Health website. And there are there are certain um, providers that that are specialized in that support. Right. What I think what you read on our website is intended to do is to let people know if they need counseling services, right. don't don't be put off by not having health insurance. We'll we'll help you figure out a plan. Now I read something also that you have a a program where people can call in. You know, if they're upset or it's a mobile... Right. In both Orange and Ulster County, we right. operate the mobile mental health service. Okay. And that's just a, that's a critical service that's available to everyone right. that lives in the community. And it might be that they um, have an unusual event that's happened that's causing some real emotional distress. Right. Or maybe they're living with a, with a mental illness and are experiencing some additional symptoms. So our teams will respond anywhere in the community. Mm -hmm. to assist people and we work of course with other first responders with the ambulance and with police when when those services are necessary but the vast majority of the time our trained staff are able to to work out a plan with with the caller and the person who needs help now are your are your services um, confidential of course okay so they don't you don't have to worry that somebody's going to know if you make a phone call you can just make a phone call and talk to somebody or find out whether or not uh, you're eligible for some of the assistance. And you do housing. I saw you did something with employment. We do. And in fact, we are, as you said, our name was Occupations to begin with. We right. always believed that employment is an important part of, of each of us having a full life in the community. And people with disabilities are among the um, greatest numbers of employed people. And so it's a, it's a big part of what we believe in creating access for people to have meaningful careers in doing what they enjoy. Right. Do you do any training for employment? So that's changed a lot over the years. And, and now the way it usually works is once people are prepared for employment and they've organized their lives so that they're ready to take that right. step, then usually the training can occur right on the job. Okay. We do have some supports. So lots of people would be eligible for a job coach to help them um, work through any complexities at the work site that they need some assistance with. But we find employers are very willing to train, particularly when what occurs is that they have a prepared workforce that, that really wants to work right, and really engages. There's been some studies where people that have actually suffered through some um, challenges um, are actually much more loyal employees than ones that you know, kind of had everything handed to them and didn't have any difficulty finding a job. Well, you know, whenever you take a journey to figure out how to move ahead in right. your life and really think deeply about what you'd like to accomplish and work hard on it, then, then whatever that goal is, people tend to be very dedicated to, to achieving it. And that's what rewarding about the work that we do. Right. Our employees love the work they do because they partner with people who really want to accomplish more in their lives. Now, is there any assistance for employers who might want to work with you, employing some of these uh, people that, you know, have gone through your program? Absolutely. And so we would help um, employers in terms of a match with candidates who would be qualified for the position. Right. We often provide supports. We help our um, individuals figure out transportation and work out some of the complexities about being sure that they can get to work and, um, and be attentive and, and fully engaged in work. And there are some limited programs that might help employers offset some of the costs, but, but that's a little more unusual. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So um, how long has your organization been serving? the area. Helen. So we were founded in 1963 wow. by a group of families who wanted something more for their children. Uh -huh. They imagined a world where their child with a disability would be able to be really a full part of the community 
And it's from that value base that we've continued to change. And um, the world has changed enormously in that period of time in terms of our understanding right. about what people are capable of. And so all of our services really come out of that belief system. So, And how long have you been with the organization? So I've been with the agency since 1982. And I, I came um, first directing one of our counseling centers. And I um, have to admit, I didn't have a master plan, but the work has been so exciting that I have never imagined doing anything else. And is there um, opportunities for people to become involved in working with your organization directly for access? So in terms of, so there, our greatest need is em employees who are passionate about our work. We have an incredible team of people with um, just amazing skills and abilities. But because we continue to grow and uh -huh. as we meet additional needs, we are always looking for talent. And the single greatest criteria is being passionate about what we do. And if people are passionate about what we do and share our values, then we're very likely to be able to match their skills and experience to a position. So if you're looking for a job and you're passionate about working with the community, be sure you give Access a call, and the number is? And so the number, again, you can call our 800 number, 888-750-2266, um, but also all of our um, jobs are posted through, and you can get that link right through our website. Okay. And all our applications are taken electronically. Okay, so you can just apply on the website, which is? Which, it, again, is um, accesssupports.org. Okay. And I assume that you have volunteers working with you? We do. Okay. And um, so our board of directors, of course, are tremendous um, community leaders who are volunteers. And our board hosts a number of committees, including a number of events. And our events are so important in terms of helping the community really have the chance to learn about the work that we do and become involved. And then, then some volunteers work directly with the people we support. Okay. And so, so that's great, too, when people are looking for that kind of opportunity. Now, what kind of events do you have? And so um, there are four main events, or actually okay. five now. We've added one. Okay. It starts in the spring with a children's mental health walk, and that's to celebrate the um, support for families and for children who um, live with with challenges mm -hmm. in, in managing their emotions and um, celebrate the possibilities for recovery and um, you know full wonderful lives and so that happens the first Saturday in May okay and then our next event is a golf tournament which is a way that the business community um, has really deepened their involvement with us uh -huh. and it, the format is a is a pro-am I'm, I'm not a golfer but the golfers tend to really like that and what I'm just so excited about is that the golfers that support us, usually with corporate sponsorships, really love hearing about the work we do. Right. And actually, we try to provide some opportunities for some of the volunteers that day to be people who have benefited from our services. Right. So that's so a great opportunity. That's two. That's two. <laughs> and then Moving right on. we also have a big party in the summer. Uh -huh. It's called Saturday in the Park. And it's uh, usually a Saturday in August. And that's actually a celebration with the people that we serve and the people that do this work. And that's a great way for people to volunteer who just want to be a part of our organization. And so we easily have 500 people, usually more. Wow. And that's been rain or shine, hot weather. And it's just fun. And our staff and the families and the people um, who use our services just have a great time together. That sounds like fun. Yeah. I might want to join you on that one. Okay, great. We'll <laughs> let you know. And then okay. we, the Elks Club in Middletown does a roast beef dinner for us in October. Okay. And then our end of the year event is our gala, which is our biggest celebration. With And we always, our Vision of Hope Award goes to people who are just inspirational leaders in um, in the work that we do, supporting people and supporting communities. Well, you've really gotten me excited about access just by this short conversation. So, um, you know, I'm I'm going to go on your website and see what events you have coming up and see how I can get more involved. Oh, well, that's terrific. Now, I understand you have something that you're working on for traumatic brain injury. And so, you know, that's one of the services that we provide, uh -huh. and that is... Um, a support service for people that have that have suffered that 
disability uh -huh. and really hands-on support in people's homes, um, just helping them adjust to activities of daily living. And so it's interesting that, that you picked out that service. It's, it's part of the challenge to talk about what we do because it's, it's really the way we work with each right. person and um, regardless of what it is that brings them to us. So that, that is one example. It's a very unique piece of work. You may know that, that memory patterns become really impacted. Right. And so helping people um, establish new patterns in their homes to be safe and to... Um, and to have them be independent. That's exactly. That's the goal, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, so Absolutely. that's wonderful. And, and independence is something we work on in, in so many areas. Right. You know, of course, uh, lots of people that we serve are, have developmental disabilities, and um, that just tells part of their story. Their talents and their dreams tell the rest of their story about yeah. what they can accomplish. And with our newest venture in affordable housing, where we work with um, Devon Management and Warwick Properties, who actually build and operate the housing and we support people with disabilities to be able to live on their own and that has been really breakthrough in terms of the different um, ways people have chosen to right. to be independent and to choose who they want to live with and what they want to do with their time it's really been remarkable yeah it sounds wonderful um, can you speak a little bit about the child welfare program that you have? Yeah, thank you for asking about that. So that's a, that's a piece of work that um, we first got involved in the late 90s when we were working um, with another organization to, to join us. And at the time I thought, wow, this is going to be really different work. And, and it is in terms of some of the way it's funded and, and some of the requirements. But right. what I learned quickly was that they were already... Um, people that we knew or had stories similar to people that we knew, families that were facing lots of complexities, um, not always, but often poverty, and needing some help to raise um, healthy children right? And, and be sure that their needs are met and avoid abuse and neglect. And so our, our child welfare services range from a preventive program called Healthy Families, which, which works with parents, usually moms, um, at pregnancy and um, in the first few months of life up until age five. And families are eligible if they have some risk factors. And then our staff does a lot of education and support right. so that um, that child has a great start. And that's one of the most fun staff to talk to because they are just so excited about every baby right. that's, um, that's joining this world and, and has the opportunity to have a brighter future. Yes, that's so important because education and care at, 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 you know, the young age is really important for development. And, and what the research shows is that if, despite whatever challenges mom might be dealing with, and there's a lot, of course, in our society, if mom and that baby have an emotional bond, yes. then the, the care of that child is, is, is going gonna, is gonna to be good. Then you can get through almost anything That's if right. you have that emotional bond. That's right. We do in child welfare also work with families that are at a different stage and have um, had maybe more difficulties in terms of challenges. And so we provide staff in people's homes, we provide uh, caseworkers to just help families sort out what is going to be the best path for their children to be able to be home and to be healthy. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the foster care? Sure. So the foster care work that we do is, is really unique. We have just three uh, locations. Two are group homes. So that's when teenagers are not able to live with a, their own family or a foster family and will be living with us and um, with a well-trained staff with, with clinical supports. And those children are going to school or sometimes working if they're a little older and really preparing for either returning home or being independent. We also have a group emergency center which we um, accept children 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And those are children that are in higher need. Right. Usually a, a family court judge has made that decision, sometimes a commissioner of social services. And those children need um, lots of care and support and treatment and assistance while a, while a, while a plan is developed right. in terms of what's going to be next for them. So that's, um, that's really important work also. We think of ourselves as a community-based child right. welfare agency because most of our work is in people's homes right that that also has three facilities when that's the only option uh-huh but you also have the three facilities uh -huh. available if you need them we do 
Okay, and what would you say would be your mission statement? And so our mission statement, we really boil it down to meaningful lives and healthy communities, and it's being sure that each person has the opportunity to live life to the fullest potential for, for health and happiness and well-being. So if there's any question that you're not living life to the fullest, <laughs> you need to give Amy staff a call. And the number again is? Is 888-750-2266. And, and I love the way you said that, Nan, because really um, joining us also as an employee is a wonderful way to be an important part of the community. And our employees are among some of the happiest, most passionate, you know, wonderful people that, that I know. So there's right. lots of ways to be involved. So you can find out about employment. You can find out about the services. You can find out how to volunteer and get involved with a great organization. Or you can just go on the website and find out about all the exciting events that are coming up. And uh, we appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about or anything you want to throw in? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. You're, you really have done a great job in, in <laughs> figuring out who we are, so I appreciate you helping me tell our story. It's, um, it's, it's hard to talk about all the things that There's occur so for 8,000 people and so so really that's why we try to, to make it as, as clear as possible that it's really just about all of us living together in a community and when, when everyone is accepted for who they are and for their unique abilities then we're all so much better off. Right, we're all like snowflakes. You have to love them all. So Amy, can you talk to us or speak on some of the challenges that you see moving forward? especially with the new administration? So that's, that's really a great question, and it's such a complicated answer. So, so I'll start by talking about how important policy is, and that's really what drives the way funding happens, which, which really creates what the opportunities are for services and supports. So one thing I'd want to mention is that New York State has done a phenomenal job in moving ahead a transformation agenda so that people have the opportunity to, to have improved health outcomes. Yeah. And so the people that we support, who often have the more complex challenges among, among folks in the community, are really benefiting from the changes that are happening in New York State, particularly with the Medicaid benefit, so that people's physical health needs and behavioral health needs and supports for living in the community are really better coordinated. So that's been really exciting changes in New York State over the last several years. Right. And so, of course, there's a concern about what changes in policy um, at the federal level right. might mean. And what will matter most in the work that ACCESS does is how the Medicaid benefit will continue. So, for example, there's lots of talk about block grants. And so block grants, on one level, if they give states a great deal of flexibility, New York State has a very clear agenda mm -hmm. about what the priorities are. Uh -huh. So that is not necessarily negative, but of course the worry is that block grants will create a reduction in funding for New York State, and if that occurs, then there'll be very difficult decisions to be made. Right. So it's way too early to know what, what all the changes will bring, but of course we're following it very, very closely and, and have a great deal of confidence that, that we'll work out a plan in New York not to lose all that's been gained right. in the progress that's been made. Exactly. Exactly. So I wanted to ask you, um, being that New York has been declared a sanctuary state, um, which would mean that there's a threat from the federal government of canceling all support, how would that affect the programs that we see? So I don't know that I really have the educated answer on that. It, I think always it's in the details, and so there's a lot of um, big statements being made about how policy might be formed. Right. But we'll, we'll see what judgments really occur as, as time goes forward. We, of course, serve all people, regardless of what brings them to us, and, right. and really appreciate that opportunity to be able to, to have everyone welcome in our services and that that's supported by New York State. And I remain optimistic that we're going to come with a, to a reasonable plan in terms of federal and state policy so that, that we're able to continue the great work that we do 
but but I don't mean that to to not be thoughtful about right. what what risks might be and some difficult decisions that might be needed to be made down the road. The the one thing that's also been true is that, that there's lots of New York State funds as well right. in the services that we provide. Right. But but a large share is federal government as well, and so um, I certainly don't don't hear that statement to mean that the health care services that, that we provide would would be impacted right. by that kind of, of concern, but, but but we'll have to really understand what the what the specifics are when decisions are made. Okay, well I understand that you have about an eighty five million dollar budget. We do. Uh, how much of that is state and how much of that is federal? So that's a great question. I don't know if I have the numbers off the top of my head, but a very significant portion is Medicaid. And Medicaid is a shared program between state and federal government. Right. So years ago, it was simply 50-50. Um, right. And so in some of that, state 50% was shared by localities. So that's all changed over the years. Yeah. And now some of the work that we do is, is, higher, is a higher share of federal match. And that also was authorized under the Affordable Care Act. So some of those um, opportunities will be changing. Right. And so we'll have to sort through how... Um, what decisions are made at the federal level, what um, decisions are then made at the state level, and, uh -huh. and, and it's, it's, I'm sure that there are adjustments that providers like Access will have to make, but at this point it's premature to know what they might be. Being that there are changes coming in the way your funding is going to be handled, do you have any plans for the future to address those? We do, Nan. We've been working actually for five years with other providers of both health care and behavioral health services to, to begin to think about our work entirely differently. It's part of what's exciting about the transformation in New York okay. State. This idea that we will move towards being paid for quality outcomes as opposed to just people using a service really resonates with us. Mm -hmm. We as long as there's adequate funding to support the, the staff that we need, right. the talented staff to do the work, we look forward to a time when contracts are established so that we're being paid for quality. Right. And, and really um, being encouraged to, to provide only those services that are really helpful to, to, move, to help support people to move along right. in terms of, of improving their health and their well-being. So it's, it's often referred to as value-based payment, but it simply means being paid for quality instead of quantity. Mm -hmm. So we're preparing for that. And we think those changes can be really positive as long as it's adequately funded. Okay, well, thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you. And uh, it was wonderful to have you. And this is Nan Gill at Empowering Women Everywhere. And if you're ready for some excitingly happy and good news, tune in to us at www.empoweringwomeneverywhere.tv or you can catch us on Spectrum, Channel 23, Friday, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., and Port Jervis Cable, 7.30 p.m. on Fridays, and at Manhattan Neighborhood Network on Channel 5, 1 p.m. on Saturdays. And if you want to have our show air in your neighborhood or your community, please give us a call at 845-294-7500, and we'll make them put us on the air. Have a great day. Thank you.